verse um, 68, bro. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. Oh, you, you, you've been to Ghana before? Well, this one before you go, just this one, just this one, just this one. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ship. With ship. So this is the most high saying he's going to bring our people into slavery. Egypt means slavery again with ships. You understand it? Listen to the end. By the way of us spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemy. We're going to be sold to our enemies. For bond men, slave men, and bond women, slave women. So check out the flyer, sis. That's your history. Check it out. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 48. Verse 47. So this is why you want to know why we went into slavery. You want to know why we were colonized? This is the reason why. Because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and with gladness of heart. For the abundance of all things. Listen carefully. This is the reason why you blacks and you Hispanics went into slavery. Listen up. Because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and with gladness of heart. Because you didn't serve the Lord your God with joyfulness and with gladness of heart. For the abundance of all things. For the abundance of all things. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies which the Lord shall send against thee. Therefore, therefore, therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee. Therefore we're going to have to serve our enemies, which the Lord is going to send against us. We're reading the Bible. These ain't our words, this is what we're reading in the Bible. Verse 47, Because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and with gladness of heart, for the abundance of all things. Because we didn't serve our gods. Therefore, therefore, shalt thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee. So the Most High said he's going to send enemies against the people on this side, the Israelites. For today, when you look at the people today, they're the blacks, the Hispanics, and the Native American Indians. Those are the Israelites today. Look up. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger. So for food, we have to serve our enemies. You want McDonald's, you want KFC, you name it, you have to serve your enemies. You have to go to the, the supermarket for food. We're serving our enemies. God calls them enemies. And in first, for drink, you want drink, water, Coca-Cola, our enemies. And in nakedness and in nakedness. So you want any clothing, t-shirts, jeans, you name it, jackets, trainers, shoes, you have to serve your enemies, according to the Most High. And in want of all things. So anything we need, we have to serve our enemies. So that's a passport, driving license, education, you name it. We have to go to our enemies. And he, and he, the enemy, God says, shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he hath destroyed thee. This is the Bible. This is what the Bible says. The Most High says, you blacks, the enemy is going to do what? Put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he hath destroyed thee. Read in the Bible. You didn't know this was in there, did you? They're never going to teach you this in the church. Read for you again. Listen to this verse again. This is a heavy verse. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee. Therefore, you blacks and Hispanics have to serve your enemies, which the Lord is going to send against you. We read in the Bible. In hunger. So for food. And in thirst. For drink. And in nakedness. For clothing. And in want of all things. You want an education. You want medical help. You want a passport. You want a driving license. You want somewhere to live. God says you're going to have to go to your enemies. This is the Bible, not me. And he and your enemy shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. God says you blacks and Hispanics, some enemy is going to put a yoke of iron upon your neck until you have been destroyed. If you come and look at these signs, 
you will see there's yokes of iron on our necks. We're not physically destroyed today, but mentally we are destroyed. So this is the Bible we're reading. So listen up to your history, black man. Don't be scared. We Verse 49. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far. So, if you know history, you will know that we were on the west coast of Africa. Here. Yeah. This is where we fled from Israel, down through the north Africa, all the way down to the west Afri coast of Africa, where we couldn't run. Places like Sierra Leone, Nigeria, Ghana, Uganda, Benin, all these places, Mali, Ivory Coast. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far. So when they came from Europe, that was across the Atlantic Ocean. Very far. They came from a very far distance. From the end of the earth. From Europe. As swift as the eagle flying. As swift as the eagle flying. So the Most High has given us a clue. Sis. Sister. Sis. Do you see yourself on the sign? Where are you from? What country are you from? Come, take a look. Come closer. Come closer. Take a look. Where are you from? Which one are you? Where are you from? What country? Okay, let's read on. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 49. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far, from the end of the earth, as swift as the eagle flyeth. So the Most High has given us a clue when he says, as swift as the eagle flyeth. It's time to wake up. Time to wake up and understand that you, blacks and Hispanics, are the biblical Israelites. And the eagle, the eagle, when you look at history, is the Greeks, the Romans, the Germans, the Dutch, the Americans, today use the eagle. The Most High has given you a clue. He's talking about the transatlantic slave trade. This is your history in the Bible. Wake up. A nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. Because when they came to the west coast of Africa, we didn't understand their tongue. A nation of fierce countenance. Very fierce countenance. Which shall not regard the person of the old, nor shew favour to the young. So during slavery, they had no mercy on the old or the young. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. This is the nail in the coffin. We're going to read the nail in the coffin. We're going to prove that this Bible, Deuteronomy 28, is talking about the transatlantic slave trade. We're going to prove it now. If you don't believe us, listen to this verse. And the Lord, and the Lord, the Most High, shall bring thee into Egypt again. So the Most High is going to bring us, the Israelites, a second time into Egypt again. Let's find out what the word Egypt means. The Bible defines every word. So we're going to understand. We're going to get the context of what the word Egypt means. Listen up. Exodus chapter 20, verse 2. I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Out of the land of Egypt. Out of the house of bondage. What does Egypt mean? House of bondage. So the word Egypt, according to the Bible, means bondage. Slavery, bondage, captivity. So we're going to read Deuteronomy 28, 68 in context again. Listen up. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. We're going to come back into bondage again. This time we're coming back into slavery on cargo slave ships. This is your history, black man. If you want to walk off in ignorance, that's on you. We're teaching you your history according to God, the Bible. Read that verse again. We're going to read it again for you. Hopefully it sinks in. So listen, listen to this. And the, and the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ship. So you're going to come back into slavery again, this time on cargo slave ships. This is your history. This is your history. This is all of you blacks and Hispanics. This is your biblical history. By the way we were, I spake unto thee. This is Moses warning us. The same way he's saying it, that's the same way it's going to happen. Thou shalt see it no more again. So he said we will not see again 
our homeland, Jerusalem, our culture, our language, our laws, our heritage, all of that was going to go. And there, and there, so when you look at this sign here, and there, the places we were sent to, whether it's the West Indies, America, Puerto Rico, Cuba, Domin Dominic um, Dominica, um, it could be anywhere across the world, wherever we go, including Brazil, Colombia, and the rest of South America. And there, ye shall be sold, ye shall be sold, sold, sold. Ye shall be sold unto your enemy. Unto who? Unto your enemy. Unto who? Unto your enemy. So, black man, black woman, this is your history in the Bible. The Most High says, and there ye shall be what? Sold unto your enemy. So when you get to Jamaica, when you get to St. Lucia, when you get to the Dominican Republic, when you get to Barbados, when you come to this side of the world, you're going to be what? Sold unto your enemy. So God says you have an enemy that you're going to be sold to. So bond men, slave men, and bond women, slave women. This is your history, black man. Yo, bro. Bro, no, bro, sis, listen up to this. And no man shall buy you. No man is going to buy us. This is an old English word for save. Old English word for save. No man was going to save us. You look back in history, we haven't been saved. Our people are still in slavery today, believe it or not. I know some of you think you're free, but from whatever you have to wake up in the morning and go to a job, pay taxes, Whenever you have to wake up in the morning and go to work, you are in slavery, believe it or not. This whole world was made, made for our sakes, the Israelites' sakes. Listen to this. Baruch chapter 3, verse 8. Behold, we are yet this day in our captivity. So behold, we are yet... Bro, listen to this. Listen to this. I want you to listen to this. Brother, listen. Can you see yourself in the sign? Come, 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 scared. You're, you're going to be on here. Which one are you? Which one are you? Which sign are you? Which... Where are you from? Jamaica. Jamaica. Okay, cool. Jamaica, you are from the tribe of Benjamin, according to the Bible. That's your biblical name, Benjamin. You understand? Benjamin. Benjamin. That's what God calls you. You make up all of these 12 are one family when you read the Bible. Did you know that? Yeah. Have yeah. you heard that before? Yeah, yeah. Have you heard you're an Israelite? No, no. Have, have you're an Israelite? Certainly. You know that, yeah? Hey, of course. How long have you known? How long have you known that? It's in, the Bible, it's in the Bible, it's in the Bible. Okay. You say you know you're an Israelite, correct? Yes, my brother? You say you know that you're an Israelite according to the Bible. Of course it is. You know that you're an Israelite according to the Bible. Yeah, what does... In, go back in the book of Moses. Come, come, come. Well, I want to hear you. I want to hear what you're saying. Go back in the book of Moses. In the book of Moses. Yes, okay. What does the Bible say in the book of Moses concerning what the Israelites must do? Deuteronomy? Because a lot of us, we are a spiritual people. Yes, you agree with me. We read the Bible, our, our parents have shown us the Bible, we all have Bibles in our houses. Right? Just like my mother did, my father did. The point is, a lot of times we view the Bible as a book. But that's it. But the Bible actually is the, re is the records of you. When you read about Moses, Daniel, Solomon, David, Jesus, you're reading about your forefathers. It's not just we're just reading about people, we're reading about our people, bloodline descendants. That's what the problem is. So all of the, all of the times when the Bible was sitting on our shelves, we just merely looked at it as if it was just a quote-unquote religious book. But not realizing, pay attention, pay attention, listen to me. We, we view the Bible simply as just a religious book. You follow me? But the Bible is actually our photo album. You understand what I mean by that? Meaning, when you want to read about your, read about your family, when you read, want to read about your people, your people is in the Bible. That's what we're showing you today. That's why we're out here. You understand me? Now, if we say that we know that we are of the book, if we say that we know that we are the Israelites, what is required of us? You got it? Deuteronomy 
10 and 12 or 12 and 10? You know the verse I'm looking for? Okay, listen to this here. Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 12. And now, Israel, what doeth the Lord thy God require of thee? Let's read it again. Let's read it again. And now, Israel, and now, Israel. See, look, the Lord is not talking to everybody. He's talking to the Israelites. But if we have been educated in a way where we don't recognize that the Bible is our records, then this verse won't have any real relevance to our spirit. You follow me? We won't really understand that the Bible is literally talking about us because that connection has not been made. Once you understand that the Bible is literally talking about you, then verses like this have new meaning. You understand me? Let's read it again. And now, Israel, what do the Lord thy God require of thee? If you know that you're Israel, then you understand that this is a personal message. He says, um, and now, O oh Israel. Once you hear that name, Israel, you say, okay, the Lord is trying to get my attention. But to fear the Lord thy God. Read it again. And now, Israel, what do the Lord thy God require of thee? So the question is, once the Lord has our attention, he says, what does the Lord require of his people, the Israelites? What is required of Israel? But to fear the Lord thy God, to walk in his ways. So our, the, the message is for us to fear the Lord our God. What does that mean? We, and to what? To fear. And now, Israel, what do the Lord thy God require of thee? But to fear the Lord thy God, to walk in all his ways. So to fear God means to walk in God's ways. You understand me? My brother, what's your name? Come, come. What's your name? How, how are you? I'm all right. What's your name, my brother? Edward. Edward. Good to meet you, Mr. Edward. So the Bible says, O oh Lord, what does, O oh Israel, what does the Lord thy God require of thee? In other words, what does the Lord look for us? What does he want from us? Now we're going to find out what that means. Let's find out what that means. Read that again. Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 12. And now, Israel, what doeth the Lord thy God require of thee? What does the Lord, Mr. Edward? Hold on, hold on. What does the Lord want from us? What does you, you were saying that he wants our heart, right? Let's find out what that means. Does God want to rip my heart out of our chest? That's not what he's talking about. He meaning, hold it, hold it, hold it. He means our mind. You follow me? That's what the word heart in the Bible means, meaning our mind. The Lord wants us to understand what he's talking about with our mind. Understanding happens in your mind, not in, your, not in this fleshly organ that pumps blood. That doesn't, that's, no understanding comes from that. Understanding comes from your mind. You with me, Mr. Edward? You with me? Okay, let's read it again. Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 12. And now, Israel, what do the Lord thy God require of thee? So what does the Lord require of us? But to fear the Lord thy God. First we have to fear God. How do we fear God? Let's look at this, let's examine that. When we grew up, we were children, right? Our parents were over us, raising us. My mother and father, just like your mother and father. You with me? If your parent says, what, if your parents said, my son, I require you to pay attention to me and to fear me. What does he, what would he mean? What would your parents mean? Mean for you to do what? I'm going to say it again. If our mother and fathers, right, our parents, our parents says, listen, I want you to fear me. Like you said, that that's what he said. The Lord said, what does the Lord require of us? So your parents would do the same thing. Your parents would say, listen, son, daughter, I require you to fear me. Right? You with me so far? Okay. We require my soul yes. to fear him. Right. So, right. require me, I, I need him. Yes. I need yes. it. Now, we're going to go a little further. In our fearing of our parents, and in our fear of God, 
it means that we would do what they say. You follow me? If my father and my mother said, listen, I have rules in this house, and I don't want you to break my rules, if we say that we fear him, meaning we would, we would keep, that's the point right there. We would keep the rules, keep the rules of your parents, right? Well, we are the children of God. So God gives us rules. And in order for us, you with me, Miss Abner? For God, in order for us to fear God, we must keep God's rules. There you go. Now we got it. Now let's read it again. Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 12. And now, Israel, what doth the Lord thy God require of thee, but to fear the Lord thy God, to walk in all his ways, and to love him. Miss Abner, you hear me? And he said, and to love God. How do we love God? By doing what God says. You agree with me? How do I love my mother and father? By doing what my mother and father says. And to love him and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul. With all thy mind. That's what he's talking about. With all our heart and soul. So that's how we will honor our parents. That's how we will honor God. You with me, Mr. Edward? Give me Ecclesiastes 12. Was that it on that? No. Give me, well, what did it say there? Yes, read. To keep the commandments of the Lord and his statutes. Which I so that's what you said earlier. So you understand that. So our job is to keep the commandments of God. So what does the Lord require of us, Mr. Edwards? For us to keep God's commandments. You follow me? So the question comes... Do we know what God's commandments are? What are you saying? Uh, because I am one of them with the Lord. Yes, okay. Pentecostal, Tread of God. Okay, hold on, hold on now. Read, read the top of that again. But it didn't say Pentecostal, it said Israel. Did I miss what he said? What did he say? Okay, I'm sorry, I misunderstood you. I'm sorry. What did you say? In the new verse and in the world today, instead of just saying um, the Israel, many, many church today is Pentecostal, but God, Methodist, Anglican. I understand. But the question is, are they following the Bible? Give me the New Testament. We're going back to this. If you love me. The scripture, if you love me. Yes. That one. What is it, Matthew 14, 15, or John 14? You know what I'm talking about? Yes, let's read that. Because you mentioned about the different churches. We're going to read that too. We're going to read that for you. Let's hang on now. You ready? The book of John, chapter 14, verse 15. If ye love me, keep my commandments. The Bible. This is Jesus. Hold it now. Wait, wait, wait. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. It goes back to the question that I asked earlier. Do we know God's commandments? But his commandment is a you mentioned about the various churches. The commandment of God is to keep the God commandment if you are God's second. Okay, let's 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 read one of let's read one one of the laws that God said to do. Go to uh, Zephaniah two and one. Let me read one of the commandments that God said for us to do. Zephaniah chapter 2 verse 1 Gather yourselves together Yea, gather together O nation not desire That's a commandment A lot of people don't know that because they don't teach that in the church They have everybody thinking that God is for everybody But meanwhile the people that are suffering Are the people that's not desired You follow me? There's people that's, that's, there's people that's living on this earth Living in way better conditions than we do You understand that? But God is talking about the people who are not desired. Let's read it again. Gather your... Hold it, don't go nowhere yet. Hold it, hold it now. Wait, 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 brother, brother. I got to Brother Edward. Brother Edward. Okay, you got a flyer? Did you get one of the flyers? Did anybody give him some literature? Brothers. Okay, right. Here's what you want to do. Here's what you want to do, Mr. Edward. When you go home, you have a Bible at home? Of course, right? What you need to do is sit down and go, let's open this up just a little bit. 
Go through this, go through this information, because all of this is in your Bible at home. The one that's sitting on your shelf. You follow me? Sit down, go through the scriptures. There's, num there's a number on here that you can call for more understanding. Did you learn anything while you were here today, sir? Ms. Samuels, did you learn anything today? Did you learn anything today by standing here? By standing here? Okay. Okay, so let me just... Well, the, 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 the job will be good when we see our people repent. Understand that? Okay, so you know who you are according to the Bible. Who are you? Who are you according to God's word, the Bible? Well, when I say I'm a Pentecostal church, I'm a Pentecostal, I go to the church in Wilson Road. It's up there. And I give God my heart. And God, I'm satisfied with him. Here's what I'm trying to show you. When the Bible says, gather yourselves together, gather together, O nation not desired, he's talking about these, take a look at this, he's talking about these people here that's calling themselves West Indian blacks, that's calling themselves American blacks, that's calling themselves Haitians. You follow me? These are not your names. Your names are recorded in the Bible. When you open up the Bible, you're not going to find West Indian in there. You're not going to find American black in the Bible. You're not going to find Haitians in the Bible. So the question is, who are we according to God's word? And the Lord, hold it now, the way the Lord gets our attention, he has to, he has to bring your understanding up to what he's talking about. So he refers to us as a nation that desired, first of all. That's supposed to get our attention. If we were just to come out and say, I'm speaking to Judah, I'm speaking to Benjamin, I'm speaking to Levi, you wouldn't know who I'm talking about, would you? But if I say a nation not desired, that might ring the bells a little bit. You follow me? That's what the Lord is doing. So he's trying to bring you home. Okay. All right, Mr. Evans. Read that information and check us out, all right? That's your history. Who's, where's the brother at? Oh, so, hey, how are you, sister? Yes. All right, I see you're interested in what we're teaching or looking at some of the information. you have any questions about what, we, what we're showing and what we're teaching today? Oh, oh, great, oh, great. So, you've been, you've been around, listening, you come often? Oh, oh, praises, oh, praises. Have you had a chance to uh, come and fellowship with us? Have you seen this paperwork before? Okay, have, so certainly uh, you've had some questions according to what you've been seeing. I mean, until your sister comes along, let's... All right. Well, all right, well, the, the Bible says our requirement is for us to keep God's commandments. Okay, so that's what we're trying to get our people to do, to repent. Because the Lord's going to bring judgment down on everybody that's not in line with his judgment, with his uh, law. So, okay, so that's what we're trying to do. We're just trying to bring our people into the repentance so that they could be spared from God's judgment. Okay, so that's what that is. That's the information that's on the fly. All right, my sister. All right. Sure, sure. So, uh, as we go through the Bible, let's let's go back to where we was at before Deuteronomy, because a lot of people they are fascinated by the Bible. Our people are fascinated by by uh, going into the verses, and it sounds good, but they don't understand the meaning of why the Bible was put here. Let's read it again. Deuteronomy, what? Deuteronomy, chapter 10 and verse 12. And now, Israel, what doeth the Lord thy God require of thee? So the question is, the Lord is addressing Israel. The Lord is addressing Israel. You have a question, my sister? The Lord is addressing... Okay. The Lord is addressing... Well, we... we we gotta, we gotta keep the laws according to what it says in the Bible of, of his people. Let's see what the law requires. But to fear the Lord thy God, in order to serve the Lord our God, there's a way to serve him. A lot of us have been taught that serving God is about jumping up and down, banging tambourines in the church. That's not serving God. Serving God is when you keep God's commandments. To walk in all his ways. Now give me Deuteronomy 22 and 5. Let me show you what it means to walk in God's ways. <laughs> Here we go. 
Read. Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 5. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. The Bible, hold it, my sister. No, I'm reading the law that pertains to us. Whenever we are in, whenever we are in violation of God's law, we have, we have to be happy that the Lord brings the correction so that we get it right. Let's read it. Let's read the, let's read the law again. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. The woman of Israel shall not wear the articles that pertain to men. That's pants, sister. That's what it's talking about. Pants is against God's law. Pants for women. That's against God's law. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. So it goes both ways. The way a, a woman is not supposed to wear pants, men are not supposed to wear dresses. That's God's law. You were showing me fringes earlier? What was that you were showing me? I don't know everything. I don't know okay, listen. Huh? I don't know everything. Okay, it's not a problem, sir. We're not here to condemn anybody. We're just here to enlighten them according to what God says in the Bible. You with me, sister? Fringes are supposed to go on the border of your garments. Give me that. You got it? And on the border of a woman's garment is a dress. So you're supposed to have the fringes all the way around the border of your garment on your dress. And on men's clothing, it would be a shirt like this. That's the reason why you see the fringes on the border blue going around the garment. You follow me? A woman will wear a dress, so her dress will come all the way down, and there will be fringes on the bottom of it. You follow me? Let's see. Let's see. Let's see if the Bible is going to confirm this. You ready? Numbers chapter fifteen, verse thirty-seven. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel. So the Lord is speaking to the Israelites, the children of Israel, which you are. And bid them that they make them fringes. The word bid means to make them do it. That's what God is saying. That's what Moses is telling the Israelites that God said, make the children of Israel. In other words, give them an order to do it. Read with them. Speak unto the children of Israel and bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments. That they make fringes in the borders of their garments. Throughout their generation. So uh, from the time of Moses all the way up to now, we're supposed to wear these fringes on our clothing. But something happened to us. When we broke God's laws, we lost that information. And we became scattered among the nations. You follow me? That's the reason why there's differences in people. Because we are the Israelites that the Bible speaks of. Why is it that we're scattered all over the earth not knowing who we are? Because we broke God's laws. The purpose of us being out here is because God is getting ready to bring judgment on our people. You understand me, sister? That's the reason why we're here. It's not me per se, because the Most High bring up any, anybody that's going to learn His law to teach this to His people. His word going to get out of here anyway, any way it has to go, whether it's me or anybody. Let's read it again. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel and bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments. Now the reason why I'm reading this is because there was an incident that happened before this law was instituted. And the reason why, the further reason why, why I'm bringing it out is because I was talking to my other sister here. I was telling, I, we were explaining that the Lord is going to bring judgment on our people. Judgment come when you break God's laws. Just like in the society. They have judgments, they have rules on the books. When you break the rules, you're before the courts and then the judgment comes down. The ultimate judge has the ultimate laws in the Bible. And he's given laws for our people to keep. You understand that? So when we break those laws, there's consequences that come with those. The consequence that came from us breaking these laws is what caused us to lose our homeland, lose our identity, lose the, lose the relationship between man and woman. Our people, as a, as a nation, we hate each other. Black men and black women hate each other. We don't really have that love for our brothers and the love for our sisters like the Bible says that we're supposed to have. You follow me? When we break those laws, all of these things happen to us. But how serious is the Lord about keeping these commandments? 
like I said to my sister earlier, this judgment is going to come from the ultimate judge from us breaking these laws that God has recorded in the Bible. One of the laws, I just pointed them out to you, okay? The Lord says that a woman shall not wear that which pertains unto a man. Remember that, okay? So now, let me, let me explain briefly. Hold it now. Wait, wait, sister. I'm almost done. There's a reason why this happened. Because there was a man that picked up sticks to cook on the Sabbath day, which is against God's law. You follow me? So the man said, look, because at that time, we didn't know what to do as a nation. We did not know what to do with him at the moment. So he had to wait for the Most High to give, give them the order. And the, and the Lord said, he shall surely be put to death. So his judgment was to be killed. Then, then immediately after that, the Lord says, listen, teach unto the children of Israel to put fringes on the fringes on the border of blue on their garment so that they will remember the laws of God. You follow me? So that's the purpose of this. It's to help us remember God's laws. Now, it's today's society, because we're mixed among the nations, is not fashionable to do that. The nations will look at you and say, why are you wearing those funny things on your clothes and that kind of stuff? You follow me? But according to God, because we are God's children, we are commanded to keep His laws regardless of how people feel about it. You understand that? We. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments throughout their generation. You hear that, sister? Throughout their generations. So we're supposed to carry those, that law and the rest of the laws of God all the way up until where we're at now and beyond. That's what it means when it says throughout your generations. Did our generation stop? No. So that means as long as we are still generating, those laws are supposed to be generating with us. You understand that? When Christ was put on the cross, Christ's death was because of the laws of sacrifice. Listen to what I'm about to say. There were five sets of laws in the Bible. We have what is known as a dietary law, which is the law about what to eat and what you should eat. Shrimp, lobster, crab, those are against God's diet. Listen to me. Those are against God's dietary law. You follow me? Then there's a law on morality. Okay, morality meaning like adultery, men with men, women with women. Those are laws that deals with the violation of the moral laws in the Bible. Then there's a ceremonial law, like the high holidays, like the Sabbath, Passover, Feast of Weeks. You understand? The Day of Atonement. These are, these are known as ceremonial laws, okay, and they're plotted on the calendar that's recorded in the Bible. So when these days come up, we're supposed to end the Sabbath day, Friday sundown to Saturday sundown, that's a, that is a ceremonial law. You understand that? Then you have what is called a civil law. The civil law is a law that involves you having up against your brother or sister. Like if your sister goes off and does something that offends you, like the book of Matthew 18 talks about that. If a brother or a sister offends you, you go to them one-on-one -on -one first and try to resolve the issue. That is, a, that is a law or a statute from what is called the civil law in the Bible. So you have the civil law, you have the moral law, you have the dietary law, and you have the ceremonial law. Then there is a law called the law of sacrifice, which talked about the, which outlines the different uh, animals that were required for certain sins. You follow me? A lamb was required for certain for certain sins that we were committing. A lamb, a priest, the priest had to listen to me, sister. The priest had to sacrifice that lamb's blood in order for you to be forgiven of that sin that you committed. I'm Elton Nathaniel, Israel United in Christ. YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed, <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC 
will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube accounts. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets out. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again, please make sure you subscribe to this Join IUIC channel to get your latest updates on all our YouTube channels. Shalom.